Pokemon evolutions have come in many different methods. Some natural, some a little strange. As have Digimon, in some equally wacky ways. But one of the all-time coolest was armor evolutions. So what if we gave Pokemon their own Digimon armor evolutions? Hey everyone, Brandon here. It's time for some Sinnoh Pokemon to get their own armor evolutions. But what is a Digimon-related video on this channel without our Digi-destined partner in crime, Carney X? Hey Brandon! Proto, what are you doing here? Where's Karn? He just needed a little Carney extra time to get his hair all quaffed and beautiful, but he wanted me to let you know that I'll be quizzing him and Brandon over on his channel on whether they can guess a Pokemon or a Digimon with just two words. Oh yeah, definitely check that out. You're such a good intern, Proto. What? No, I'm no in- Anyway, I think I hear Karn coming. Oh hey! Apologies for being late, I assume my intern filled you in? Yep, so how about we get started with the god of Pokemon himself? Wait, we're giving Arceus an armor evolution? Arceus? Who said anything about Arceus? I'm talking about the primordial being Bidoof. This time around, we tried to break from tradition a bit, so we gave Bidoof the Digi-Egg of Knowledge. This egg is typically associated with bugs, so we gave it to bug or bug-adjacent Pokemon in the past, but it is also associated with drills because of Digmon here. So when combined, Bidoof evolves into... Bibild, the construction Pokemon, a normal steel type, who we worked with Fungusmon to create, and they also created the rest of the armor evolutions in this video, so make sure to check out their link in the description. Brandon and I thought with beavers being known for their wicked dam building skills, and their many depictions as construction workers in cartoons and other media, that this would be a perfect pairing of concepts for this digi-egg, turning the armor into a hard hat and chainsaw tail, with a little drill tooth in there for good measure. And the knowledge aspect comes in with Bibild acting more as a four-person, being knowledgeable in how to construct well-made buildings, with the Crest of Knowledge sitting right on top of its hard hat directly next to its mind for added effect. As Karn noted, its body is optimized for all aspects of the job, being the brains and brawn behind the operation. So this construction worker isn't catcalling anyone. It is too smart and busy for that. And if it wasn't obvious, its name comes from a mixture of Bidoof, Babarel, and Bild. Bibild definitely still maintains the friend-shaped nature from when it was a Bidoof. Speaking of, let's move on to the Digi-Egg of Friendship, who we gave to Baneri. This Pokemon is another that evolves with high friendship, so it makes for a great candidate for this armor. With that said, Baneri evolves into Lopiri, the Vault Antler Pokemon, a normal electric type. This galvanic rabbit uses its powerful hind legs to move at lightning fast speeds across the plains and deserts it calls home. It will charge up power as it runs, turning into a vault tackle that makes Ash's Pikachus look like a hug. We really tried to evoke the feeling of Rydramon with this evolution, turning the lightning horn on the Digi-Egg into two antlers, which take this from your average bunny to a jackalope, from which it gets its name, while also mixing Lopunny in there as well. Anyway, this mythical creature hailing from the American West, as with most jackrabbits, is known for its speed, which fits in well for an electric type. And also, come on, lightning bolt antlers? How cool is that? Almost as cool as Rydramon, which is a big compliment coming from your resident Rydramon fan. Oh yeah, you prefer Rydramon over Flamedramon, but Proto likes Flamedramon on more though, doesn't he? He sure does, that silly man. So why don't we give him something to oogle at with a Digi-Egg of Courage evolution that heavily evokes it. For this, we picked probably the most clear Vmon equivalent that exists in Gen 4, and pretty much Pokemon in general, Riolu. So Riolu Courage Armor evolves into Kalurio, the spirit Pokemon, a fire fighting type. What you think, Brodo? Thank you! Riolu was such a perfect candidate for this video to the point that I almost stopped at Gen 3 with this series, but the very idea of this Pokemon convinced me to do it. Make sure to show some support by liking, sharing, and commenting on this video so I know y'all want to see Gen 5. Anyway, back to Kalurio. This Pokemon is inspired by the multiple depictions of hellhounds across world mythologies. Given Riolu and Lucario are partly inspired by Anubis, a god of funerary rites, and guide of the underworld, a fiery hound found in the underworld made sense as a basis for this evolution. And to tie it further into its fire typing, the specific hellhound we based it on is that of Guayota from Guanche mythology, which hails from Tenerife of the Canary Islands. Guayota is a malevolent deity, taking the shape of a large black dog that lives inside the Tede volcano, which is seen as a gateway to the underworld. He is often accompanied by other small hellhounds called Tibicina, which are demons in their own right. Their black fur was what informed the choice to make Riolu's black coloration take over with Kalurio. While it is inspired by these malignant demons, Kalurio's personality is actually quite the opposite, though its appearance may evoke fear in those who don't know its true nature. An intimidating protector, it stands guard at volcanoes, courageously defending against any Pokemon or natural disasters that would threaten nearby towns or villages. 
Kalurio's name might just sound like Lucario's mixed up, but it actually has a greater meaning. In Japanese, Kasai or Kaji means an out-of-control flame or conflagration. So that Ka sound takes the lead in this fiery Pokemon's name. I almost designated this the Burning Spirit Pokemon, but that felt like a mouthful and wanted to keep it one word like Riolu and Lucario. And the word Spirit felt in the same realm as Emanation and Aura. And I assume Caloria would have an ability like Intimidate given its lore and inspiration? Oh yeah, most definitely. You could even say that it has an intimidating aura. That reminds me of another Pokemon from Sinnoh known for its intimidation and is a brave bird itself, Star Raptor. Though, rather than courage, we opted for the Digi-Egg of Sincerity for Starly. So, when combined, Starly evolves into... Staria. The Honor Pokémon, a grass-flying type. As we have explained previously, evolutions from this egg typically have themes of flora and sometimes Japanese culture. So, Staria's inspiration comes from the Japanese folktale of Momotaro, also known as the Peach Boy. What would you know, Peach Boy? The tale speaks of a boy born from a peach bestowed by the gods. In his adolescence, he journeys to defeat a band of Oni terrorizing his adoptive parents' land, befriending a dog, monkey, and pheasant along the way. This pheasant is depicted as a Japanese green pheasant and sometimes as an anthropomorphic warrior in its own right. So put together the themes of a plant-born boy and his green bird companion, throw in a little bit of Tengu, and you get yourself a perfect grass flying type. Staria definitely gives off the same vibes as Shurimon, initially being a bird that with this egg turns into some kind of Japanese warrior. They're dating. What? They're dating. Okay. Anyway, Staria is honor bound to serve their master, which doesn't even have to be a trainer who caught them. Any person or Pokemon that it believes to be superior, Staria will swear fealty to. Though they don't usually inhabit the same area, Surfetched and Staria, who do meet, have been found to lock in intense battles to see who fights more honorably. Honor can be interpreted as a form of sincerity, treating others with the highest form of respect by being honest, earnest, and able to be relied upon. Which, reliability is the name of our next Digi-Egg, which usually has themes of water and water-based vehicles in its evolutions. Because what is more reliable than sea crafts? Right, guys? Right? So who better to give a water-based evolution than to a Pokemon that's already based on an aquatic animal? The Gibble line are all land-based sharks, so it's time to return them to the sea with Gibble's reliability armor evolution, Giblast. The Jetstream Pokemon, a water dragon type. The form of aquatic vehicle this is based on is a jet ski. I mean, with the way Gibble's body and head protrusions are shaped, and it being a shark, it made for an easy transition into this concept, transforming those previously mentioned head protrusions into boys. That's how we say buoys. Just because you're American doesn't mean you're right. <laughs> to help keep Giblast afloat on the surface of the water and turning its dorsal fin into the handles of a jet ski. The Garchomp line pulls inspiration from the Carcarious genus of shark, with its last extant member being tiger sharks and many being prehistoric. So Giblast pulls from another prehistoric shark, the Stethacanthus, which itself has an oddly jet ski handle like dorsal fin. Dorsal fin? <laughs> I thought it was an anvil that someone dropped on its head Looney Tune style. Yeah, weirdly enough, that is a dorsal fin that was apparently lined with spines. So unlike Giblast, you wouldn't want to try to ride this thing. Which I don't know why or even how you would anyway. Giblast is yet another speedster. What Lopiri is to land, this Pokemon is to the sea. Leaving enormous waves in its wake that people have been known to use for surfing contests. Riding on the back of this Pokemon can be a harrowing experience if it's not properly trained. It definitely gives the Sharpedo used in Alola something to aspire to. Since we just talked about three starters types, why don't we move on to the starters? True. Why don't we continue riding the wave of water Pokemon and start with Piplup and work our way backwards in the decks? Sure thing. So we decided to give Piplup the Digi-Egg of Love. This egg is known to make creatures winged, with Halcimon being known as the Wings of Love. So what would a penguin with big wings look like? A puffin. Bless you. No, Brandon, I meant an orc? Karn, it's not awkward. You just sneezed. It's okay. No, I mean this thing. Oh, yeah, that could work. So Piplup with the Digi-Egg of Love becomes Piplum, the Puffin Pokemon, a water flying type. Its partial flying typing obviously takes into account its new ability to soar through the sky, but when combined with its primary typing, references the belief of some Inuit people that Ox have the ability to control storms and the weather. This weather control is present in Piplum, while not quite as massive as Pokemon like the Weather Trio or the Genies. It can summon small storms that make for turbulent seas around where they reside. Tying it back to love, Piplum's concept and abilities refers to the tides of love and its ebbs and flows. The tides of love? That sounds like the name of a cheesy romance novel. Oh, it is. Oh my. Uh, 
Well, on a completely different note, Chimchar. We decided to give it the Digi Egg of Light. Like the Digi Egg of Love, Light has a common theme of wings, but more so angelic wings. Except for Mambo Mon. But we don't talk about that guy. A winged monkey would definitely be cool. Reminds me of the Wizard of Oz and the Wicked Witch's monkey marauders that kidnapped Dorothy. And that is in fact one of the inspirations we took when creating Chimchar's light armor evolution, Chimage. The wizard Pokemon, a fire fairy type. This Pokemon takes inspiration from the Wicked Witch and the Wizard in its design and abilities as well. Chimage juggles magical balls of flame between its hands and feet while in the air, throwing them like spells towards its opponent. Flying monkeys are not an exclusively Wizard of Oz creation, though. They actually originate from the Chinese Zhao, or Ao, which are essentially winged monkey spirits that like to make a lot of noise. Chimage is certainly a far cry from Infernape. Though their origins both hail from Chinese mythology, the silvers of Chimage really contrast well against the golds of Infernape, along with their types and attack styles. Maybe we could make a third Chimchar revolution that's a tank-like fighter to kind of complete the RPG trio. Don't you go giving my audience any ideas there, Karn. They might actually do that. You, you guys should totally go do that. That leaves us with the last egg and Pokemon of this video, which are the Digi Egg of Hope and Turtwig. Quadrupedal mythical creatures are usually seen with evolutions using this egg. And given that Turtwig is already quadrupedal and is one of the few starters to stay that way, this makes things easy for us. Ah, so what you're saying is we need to make it bipedal. What? No. Do you want the comments to come for your head? Well, yeah, free engagement, but I get you. So what were you thinking? Well, given that Torterra is based on the world turtle found across multiple mythologies, why don't we find a different mythical turtle to base this on, like the Tarrasque? A draconic chimera of sorts, with the head of a lion, carapace of a tortoise, and the tail of a serpent. You know what that kinda sounds like to me? The lion turtle seen in Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. Exactly! So, with the Digi Egg of Hope, Turtwig evolves into Turtask, the island Pokémon, a grass dragon type. This Pokémon floats across the seas, housing bird Pokémon that need rest within the dwelling on its back. When they return to land, they undergo long periods of hibernation in forests. Sitting so still, they grow extra foliage on their backs. Ah, uh, to be a little bird cozied up in Turtest's shell. What a treat. Though we do usually try to pair the Light and Hope Digiex together, thematically due to their relation to TK and Kari, it's not an absolute rule. Though they do have a connection technically because we gave Hope and Light to two of the Sinnoh starters. Speaking of connections, the Sinnoh starters were when we started to see legitimate and obvious group themes for the final evolutions, with theirs being myths from around the world. We kept that theme intact with these three armor evolutions, but also added in another theme, mythical creatures within entertainment. We've already discussed the winged monkeys and the lion turtle, one from a movie and the other from an animated TV show. For Piplum, its partial inspiration is Sven from Happy Feet 2. That's a bit of a niche reference there, Brandon, and I'd hardly call this guy mythical. Well, if you actually watch the movie, then you would know that Sven is called the Mighty Sven, and is essentially worshipped like a god, as the penguins think he is some kind of miraculous flying penguin. I'm still not going to watch the movie, Brandon. Well, fine. Your loss. But if you don't want to be at a loss of more content with Karn and I, make sure to head over to his channel and subscribe to see us try to guess Pokemon or Digimon with only two words linked here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see, see you guys, guys next time. time.